How to get a home loan with contractor income. The contractor. Well, today we're gonna go through everything you need to know to get a home loan being on contractor income. The best part? We're gonna show you lots of real life examples to make sure you don't get your home loan knocked back when you apply. Let's dive right in. So Jen, why do contract workers find it hard to get a home loan? Yeah, the banks really struggle to understand contractors' income. The banks view contractor income as really highly unstable and likely to get cut out at any time, which is completely wrong. Not quite my tempo. Which is why today we're gonna to take you through some examples and some workarounds and getting a home loan as a contractor. Step number one is determining what type of contract income you're gonna be working on. That's right, Nathan. Contractors get paid in lots of different ways. And you yourself would know, you could be going through a work hire company, you could be a subcontractor, you could be a self-employed contractor, you could be an IT contractor, a freelancer, there's lots of different ways you can earn contract income, which is why it's wrong when the banks just have a, you know, a broad brush approach to it. Let me hear you say, that ain't right. Broadly speaking, there are two ways the banks will view contractors. Option number one is as a PAYG or salaried contractor. So a PAYG contractor in the bank's eyes is either gonna be a short-term, long-term, or medium-term contract. You're either gonna be getting things like annual leave, sick pay, day rates, it all changes. It's usually if your employer is paying your superannuation and your taxes for you, you know you're a PAYG contractor. Now, generally the rules around salaried contractors for the bank are they want to see at least two years industry experience and a minimum of three months in the role. So they can be a little bit more restrictive than if you're just salaried government worker, for example. A few examples of a salaried contractor might be someone that works in the mines, an IT consultant, or even someone in real estate where you might be on a shorter or longer term contract and still get your pay slips. The second type of contract is self-employed contracting. Now this is typically where you'll have your own ABN, you're sending out invoices and you're getting paid directly. Again, this works in the case where you might have multiple employers. So you might work at different sites, you can have different clients, but generally speaking, the banks see this income as a bit more volatile, even though it might not be the case. If you're a self-employed contractor and applying for a home loan, the banks are going to want to see at least two years industry experience. And if you're running your ABN, they're going to want to see it registered for at least 24 months. So it's a few things to be aware of if you're looking at applying for a home loan as a self-employed contractor. So typical self-employed contractors we see are management consultants, journalists or freelancers. These are all the general people we see getting paid on an ABN. So step number two, if you're applying for your home loan as a contractor is getting your loan documentation together. So Jaden, walk me through this step. So if you're a PAYG or salaried contractor, you're gonna need most of the regular stuff. Your two most recent pay slips, your group certificate or PAYG summary, and also a copy of the contract that you're on. Again, the banks are going to wanna see the details in the contract. If it's got long to go, or if it's got an automatic rollover to get an understanding of potentially how secure your income is. On the other hand, if you're a self-employed contractor, Nathan, what are they looking for? So they're typically looking at one to two years tax returns that are lodged and completed. So they can't be draft, they have to be lodged into the ATO. And they'll look at things that, what your income was over the two years or the one year and average things out and get an understanding of what it looked like. Now they're not too concerned, as long as it's all paid toward your ABN, you're gonna be fine. One thing to watch out for in this self-employed space is uh, changing from being paid on your ABN and moving to being paid as a PAYG. That will affect you because the banks won't look at the PAYG contract income. So does the length of the contract matter? Yes, it does. You're goddamn right. So if you've got less than five to six months left on your contract, the banks are gonna to wanna to see a bit more information about your situation to make sure it's gonna get rolled. If you've been there for more than two years in that same contract that's been rolled, it's a bit easier. But if, for example, you've just started a new contract and there's uncertainty about getting that extension, the bank may ask for copies of letters or some sort of acknowledgement saying that your company is likely to extend the contract that you're on. Now we see this a lot in uh, IT industry where you'll get little three month contracts and you'll move from employer to employer because the contracting industry and the IT sector, 
there's always better opportunities elsewhere. So in these sort of situations, we look at your history and see what it looks like over the last 12 to 24 months to gauge and get an understanding of your income. It's all doable. Again, it might just mean a bit more paperwork up front and to look at the banks that understand contract income compared to the ones that just flat out say no. It's gotta be no dog. So step number three, when you're applying for a home loan as a contractor is working out how much you can borrow. So typically, your monthly pays might go up and down if you're a self-employed contractor, or they can be relatively stable if you're a salaried contractor. The banks will look at potentially your group certificate to annualize your salary or your monthly figure. Nados, what's the right and wrong way and the easiest way to do this? So the banks, if you're a PAYG contractor and you're earning a salary, they'll look at your last two pay slips, they'll try and annualize your year to date that's on the bottom of your pay slip and gauge which one is gonna be lower, either your group certificate or your year to date. Now typically most lenders will take the lower of the two so just remember that and that will be used to work out what you can borrow. If you're self-employed once again some banks will look at one year some will look at two years. If they're looking at two years once again they'll look at the two years tax returns and look at the lower of the two if there's more than a 20% variance. If there's an increase they can see it going up they'll take the higher amount if there's less than a 20% variance. There's lots of different ways which is why you want to work with a mortgage broker that's experienced with contractor income because it can be tricky and we've had cases where people have been knocked back by their bank with contractor income. So that's right Jane, we had a real life example of this where we had a customer that was knocked back by their own bank applying for a loan on a short term contract. Now the reason why they refused their application was they were in a three month contract. It was only three months and then after that there was no certainty on it being renewed. She was an IT worker and this is all too common in the sector. So we were able to find a solution that would work for her got a bank that wasn't her bank across the line and approved with the loan that she was after. So remember, some banks have a real hard time wrapping their head around self uh, PAYG contractor income. So it is something that you wanna work with a good broker that understands it and can get you across the line. So that's it for today guys, hope you enjoyed the video. If you're a contractor, there's way more to see on our website, we'll include a link below. If you've got any questions, leave it in the comments, leave a thumbs up, otherwise hit us up at huntergalloway.com.au.